Now, let us discuss the causative factors for epilepsy. Any external or internal stimuli that damages the normal brain activity may result in seizures. More than 70% of cases are of unknown etiology. Brain trauma may result in nerve signaling imbalances, causing seizures. Brain lesion and tumors also result in seizures. Few poisoning cases, like lead poisoning, also trigger the abnormal firing of neurons that causes seizures. Infections in the brain like encephalitis, meningitis, also cause seizures. Febrile seizures are seen in children with high body temperatures. Metabolic disturbances, gestational diabetes, also cause seizures. And developmental disabilities like autism, cognitive impairments, also cause seizures. The environmental factors that cause epilepsy include the continuous exposure to the air pollutants, like carbon monoxide and lead, may cause epilepsy. Birth asphyxia due to improper handling of babies at birth may also cause seizures. Chronic drug and alcohol abuse may result in imbalances in the excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitters, which leads to seizures. Now, let us try and understand the disease process of epilepsy. The pathophysiology of epilepsy involves many pathways, and it is difficult to understand the entire disease process under one heading. So, let us try and understand each of the pathological processes in detail. The main mechanism includes the imbalances of excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitters. In this pathway, the excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate levels are increased, and the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA is disordered. This leads to the abnormal firing of neurons. As a result, the synaptic currents break the neuronal membrane. The other theories that describes the pathology of epilepsy is the alteration of ion channels in neuronal membrane. This results in the biochemical modifications of the receptors, which further causes the modulation of secondary messenger system and thereby the gene expression. This causes a shift in the extracellular ion concentration and alters the neurotransmitter uptake and metabolism of the glial cells. It also results in local imbalances between main neurotransmitter, that is the excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitter, and neuromodulators like acetylcholine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, which causes prolonged seizures. The other widely accepted theory under ion channel mechanism is the abnormality in the potassium ion conductance. This causes defect in the voltage-sensitive ion channels. This results in deficiency in the membrane ATPase, which causes neuronal membrane instability, which ultimately results in seizures. Let us now discuss the other postulated theory of epilepsy, that is, electric potential mechanism. In this theory, it is believed that under normal conditions, the nerve impulse propagation in the brain occurs in a synchronous manner. In such a situation, the electric potential in the brain remains zero. The damage or irritability to the gray matter leads to activation or inactivation of the neurons. This causes an excessive synchronous discharge, thereby generating an electric potential. When this electrical discharge is localized, it causes partial seizures, and when it spreads to entire brain, it leads to generalized seizures. Now, let us discuss the common clinical presentation of a patient with epilepsy. A patient with epilepsy present with varied clinical manifestations according to the seizure type the individual is suffering with, and it may range from elementary episodes to prolonged convulsions. It also depends on the focal region and other factors like pregnancy or any other underlying factors. However, a stereotypical presentation is drawn from the International Epilepsy Foundation. The general clinical manifestations include blackouts or periods of confused memory, episodes of unresponsiveness, involuntary movement of arms and legs, fainting spells with incontinence, followed by excessive fatigue, auditory and visual hallucinations, muscle spasms. In few cases, distorted head, eye fixed in one position and clenched hands, tongue biting, frothy discharge from mouth, ineffective breathing, and feeble pulse are also observed. The complications of epilepsy usually result in functional impairment affecting the daily way of living of the individual. The most common complications include driving the vehicles, difficulty in learning, risk of aspiration pneumonia when saliva enters the lung during a seizure while having food, 
head injuries, or bumps from falls. Self-inflicted bites on tongue and mucosal layer inside the mouth. Permanent brain damage, stroke or other damage. Side effects of medicines.